What up, Interverse? Josh here again from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day Renaissance man. And today we're continuing our series on the monomyth. And particularly, what I want to talk about today, I think it's only appropriate if we're going to do a series on the monomyth to just talk about the guy who popularized it. And that, that man, is, his name is Joseph Campbell. He was a professor, and there's plenty of information about him out on the web. The main thing that I wanted to bring to everyone's attention is that if you're not familiar with who he is, he did a lot of great interviews late in his life uh, for PBS. And most of those are on YouTube. And if not, you can definitely, there are several avenues and areas. I think um, Audible or Amazon, you can buy those. And it's a really great way to become familiar, to familiarize yourself with the monomyth from the master himself, Joseph Campbell. Because there's no one who could talk about the hero's journey in more detail and really bring it to life better than than him. But as I mentioned before in previous videos, he was a professor of mythology. He studied all around the world. He studied major religions. He studied major mythologies, but he also studied the, the lesser known ones as well, in, to include fairy tales. And again, through that, he sort of found that there was some major beats throughout all of those stories that were continually being repeated. For example, if you look at stories from ancient Egypt of, and I may butcher this because it's been a while since I studied it, but um, um, Osiris and Ra and the, the, the gods of Egypt and then you look at other stories, ancient stories, like from the Bible with Jesus and his virgin birth. There's some huge similarities. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say that, that one copied off the other. But what I'm saying is this, these stories that have withstood time, these stories that have been passed down and had such a huge influence on mankind, both consciously and subconsciously, have some some very unique identifiers and the virgin birth is one of them it's very very interesting very unique um, another one is threshold guardians whenever a hero embarks on their adventure there's always one or several people that are there to block their path and kind of test them to see if they're worthy of going on the adventure in the first place. So Joseph Campbell kind of identified those things and it's very interesting uh, when you look at all of the the stories that he he analyzed and and studied the all of the the amazing things that he identified. The other thing to note about him is that he had a major influence on pulp culture. If I haven't mentioned it already, and if you haven't, you, most people who have done any study on the monomyth already know this, but for those of you who might be neophytes, the, the, the major work that really popularized Joseph Campbell was Star Wars. Because when Star Wars came out and it was such a big hit, uh, George Lucas attributed a lot of the story to his study of the monomyth and Joseph Campbell. And as a matter of fact, some of those some of those interviews I was talking about that Joseph Campbell did, he did them late in his life, I think he was in his 80s, at Skywalker Ranch. Because after the movie came out and Joseph Campbell had an opportunity to meet George Lucas and they became good friends. And the point is, he had a great influence over several 
different mediums, not just writing. I mean, it, it's, even today, I can see the influence of the monomyth seeping into other areas that are kind of still new, still newborns, so to speak, like the video gaming industry. I think we're going to see, we've already seen video games like Mass Effect and Knights of the Old Republic, which both just happen to have been done by Bioware, so maybe there's someone there that's <clears throat> attuned to the monomyth, but um, also stories like Tomb Raider and Drake's Fortune, those stories follow the monomyth pretty well. They follow the hero's journey. They they hit those beats pretty well. They follow those, those archetypes. So you can see that the not only does the, the monomyth have a major um, influence in different areas, but I believe a lot of Joseph Campbell's work was the reason why people are even aware that the monomyth exists and that there are those structures in the in the first place and um, the other interesting thing just a side note to think about is that J.R.R. Tolkien was writing and I think he may have published Lord of the Rings either just before or right around the same time that that Joseph Campbell came out with the hero's journey. So the point isn't that J.R.R. Tolkien, I'm not saying that he was influenced by him in any way. As a matter of fact, I think they were working in parallel, but not together. But the thing that's interesting is here was another man who studied mythology and fairy tales a lot. And he wrote a story without ever really looking at Joseph Campbell's work he wrote a story that followed all those beats it was a contemporary myth that followed the monomyth structure almost to the T without with, just because he did his own independent study so I think there's a lot of a lot to be said there about the congruence with Joseph Campbell's work and how Tolkien Tolkien's work with Lord of the Rings just shows that it shows that the monomyth works th subconsciously in the sense that you don't have to have ever read the book to understand the tenets that apply to the monomyth. They're almost innate in humans themselves. So anyways, I hope this has been insightful. I hope you've gotten to understand Joseph Campbell a little bit more. Another thing of note, just because I lived in Monterey for a couple years of my life, was that he too lived there, and he also, he tried to write a book, um, but it never, he tried to write a novel, but it never came to fruition. In any case, in any event, Joseph Campbell, if you ever get to listen to any of his speeches, they're extremely enlightening, they're highly recommended, and I promise you, you won't be disappointed. And if you haven't already, I would highly recommend that you go out and buy The Hero's Journey. Because if you are a writer, or anybody who tells stories, and this interests you, or you can see the value of the monomyth, then there's no better person, like I said before, there's no better person to check out than the master himself, Joseph Campbell. He's sort of the Leonardo da Vinci of mythology writing. So, there it is. I think I've been long-winded enough. Until next time, take it easy.